friends, it's Amy at Doki Doki Forest. I'm so glad you are here. Today is Wednesday, which means it is hashtag watercolor Wednesday. This is a super fun open collab hosted by Tanya over at Side Gig Crafts, and I will have her info down below. So if you are painting and taking out your watercolors any week and you want to share, just use the hashtag Watercolor Wednesday and be sure to tag Tanya and let us see what you are creating. So this week, my friend and I decided to do a camper themed page. We wanted to do like a camper Christmas themed page. So we were sort of just like chatting together and we were both painting and it's really cool because our campers turned out completely different so that was really fun she had a whole desert theme that she was doing and i was doing a snowy woodsy sort of theme and i'm sorry i didn't film when i was drawing and inking this i didn't think i was going to put it up as a video and then when i got to the painting i thought well let me just turn on the camera sometimes when i'm creating i I usually do turn on the camera nowadays, but every once in a while I sit down and I think like, oh, I'm just going to do a little something. And, you know, next thing I know, it's turned into like a bigger project than I thought. And I'm like, oh, I should have recorded that. <laughs> so I figure now I'll just record it. And then if it turns out, you know, it's something I want to share, I'll share it. And if it turns out like, eh, you know, not really something I got to share, then I'll just keep it to myself. <laughs> But yeah, campers and caravans, these are um, pretty popular these days. And I think that is largely because Christina over at Christina's Shack made her camper junk journal super cute. I'll link that down below. And then um, Sylvia and Birdie also made caravan campers. And I'll link them down below too. And then the three of them were making all of these pages for their camper journals and they had themes and it was so much fun. I loved it. So now I'm thinking, you know, I didn't realize how cute campers were or caravans, you know, either one, people call them different things in different places. Around here, I think they're usually campers, but I kind of like caravan better. It sounds like, you know, more of a, more of a journey. And Possum Patty, I know she is doing a Christmas caravan shaped journal. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does with that. And she'll be working on that all month. So yeah, there's all kinds of campers and caravans and I'm sure I've, I've missed a few. So if you are making anything with a camper, uh, let me know down below. I would love to check it out. And it's funny, too, because even going to the store now, I'm seeing more of the caravan sort of themed items. And I don't know if that's just because I'm more aware of it now or if that actually is like sort of a trend for the year. But um, I'm definitely noticing it more. So, yeah, Christmas caravan. That's what I have going on here. And I thought I would have it out in a little forest where there was some snow that had fallen and of course the little pine trees in the background, they have to have little faces and stuff. And I knew I wanted to have a little critter waving out of the front door, welcoming you in. I always like to add a beastie or two if I can, or at least put some smiley faces in there and try to make some things come to life. Shockingly, the caravan doesn't have a smiley face. <laughs> And I actually drew a postcard size one as well that I'm going to paint. So I did two different sizes. This is the larger one that's just on some watercolor paper. And it actually turns into sort of a mixed media project. I start with just watercolor for the most part and then add a little more later, which you will see. Because I thought I was done, but then I went in and I looked at it this morning and I just had some things that 
didn't seem quite right and I wanted to make some changes. So, you know, you'll see as we go and I'll let you know as we go. So for the caravan, I wanted the bottom to have some striping and I thought it would be cute if it had like candy cane striping. And I know you don't see a lot of it, but you can see some of it. And then I wanted the camper itself. I'm switching between camper and caravan now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wanted the caravan itself to be a neutral sort of color because I knew it was going to have, you know, green all around it. If it, if it weren't for the, all the trees and the reeds and all that stuff, I would have painted it green. But I just painted it neutral so that way I could make the other colors kind of pop around it. And then in the wheel, I put a little holly plant, little holly berry in there with some leaves. And hanging off the door handle, I feel like it's really hard to figure out what the heck that is. But the idea was that it was a little cluster of like jingle bells. So that way when you open and close the door, you know, you get the little, you know, the little um, jingle jangle of the jingle bells. So that's what those are, in case you were wondering. They look kind of like a flower or something like that but the idea was that they were jingle bells and then it has just one little window there which you can peek into and see there is a Christmas tree inside that is also alive so I think it just kind of walked in there how does a tree walk hmm. you know it's just one of those things you have to try to catch them in action they're they're a little secretive about it but when you're not looking they can just get up and move if they want to or at least around here they can do that sort of thing. And then I wanted yellow in that room because I wanted it to look like there were lights on. My yellow was a little bit dirty at first though because my yellow on my palette, I'm using my big palette, which I've had for over a decade. And uh, the yellow is very green at this point. There's very little of it left and what's left has green just from me mixing all the time. So I had to sort of uncover that yellow underneath. So I sort of used the little bit of green layer, kind of wiped that away what was on top, and then I got to the yellow. My palette is like that. If you look at it, you can definitely tell which colors were my favorite because they are gone or nearly gone. So like brown matter is almost gone. And the yellow, I think it's Aurelian yellow. Does that sound right? I think that's the one that's almost gone. And my permanent rose is pretty much gone too. And my ultramarine blue. So anyway, those seem to be the colors I use the most. And some of the colors, I actually don't even remember what they were called now. I should have written it down on the outside of the palette. Uh, that would have been helpful, especially when I need to reorder. <laughs> so yeah, getting back into the camper now, we're just putting on the first layer, just getting on the greens, and then I'll go back in and add a little more detail. And then that's all snow down there, so I wanted to get some shadowing in. I didn't want to just leave it white, so I put a little bit of blue in, and then I was on my palette and sort of in the center where you mix all the watercolors together, there was this other color that I think was a little bit of a color called Moonstone. I think it's Moonstone. And it had mixed with a little bit of blue. So it was really interesting. I wound up using that. So it almost has this very light purpley sort of tone to it. It's like a purpley blue gray. And I thought that was perfect for the snow. And this is nice, clean snow, too, because it's out in the woods. You know, when the snow falls and it looks so pretty as it covers everything. And then if you look a few days later, especially by the street, it just gets all brown from all the sand and the, the salt. I mean, the salt doesn't really color it, but, you know, the sand definitely makes it look kind of nasty and gritty. So this is nice, clean snow out here. Now, here's the first thing I do. Well, I shouldn't say the first thing, but here's a thing that sort of bothered me that, I mean, I make mistakes all the time when I'm drawing and I could point them out right now and, uh, you know, but then you might not be able to unsee them. <laughs> but yeah, so I made mistakes all the time. But 
One of the things that bothered me about this was when I painted that blue in the door window there. And today when I looked at I think it bothered me a little bit yesterday, but today when I looked at it, I was thinking, how is that light off there, but it's on in the window where the tree is? And, you know, of course, maybe it's just sort of like a dark section of the caravan. You know, maybe it's two rooms. Maybe it's like the TARDIS and it's way bigger inside than it looks. You know, I, I you know, I, I could definitely say any of those things. But the truth of the matter is that that actually bothered me. And most of the time I can kind of go with the flow or work with my mistakes. And in this case, I wanted to fix it. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to fix it. So that's one of the things I will take care of at the end and uh you know I tried to figure out a solution for that and I'm just adding a little bit of shadowing because I just want to separate you know the wreath from the caravan just kind of want that to pop the snow from the caravan I just am trying to add a little bit of depth to the painting and a little more yellow over here where I thought it was a little bit green yellow and I just wanted it to be yellow yellow and then I'm just trying to deepen some of these colors a little bit. Sometimes you put on a layer and it dries and it seems a little bit light and you just want it to have, you just, you just want to punch up the color a little bit. And we've had a little bit of snow here so far, not too much. There was just like one night where it snowed a little bit, but then it changed over to rain and it was gone. So. We don't have anything on the ground right now. We just have frost, you know, in the morning and ice on the cars and stuff, but no snow yet. Hard to believe it's going to be December. Just a couple of days. Wow. Yep, Christmas is sneaking up. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, you could definitely, you know, make the caravan however you want. You could just have a winter scene. You know, you could just take out those Christmas lights and the Christmas tree and um, just have it be a winter scene. And I'm just trying to figure out here how I wanted to make some texture in the tree. So first I was kind of painting on some of the pine needles, but I didn't really like how that looked. So now I'm doing more of a dry brush and just trying to put a little bit of texture on the trees. And I could go in with either a crayon or I could go in with um, colored pencil and add some texture as well. And you will see me try that. So every time I kind of add on some of the texture, some of it comes out a little bit dark and I try to blend it in, but I do like the dry brush effect. I thought that looked, you know, kind of pine needle-y. And coming up very soon, you will see me do something I seem to do every single time. I'm painting. I don't know why, but every single time I seem to at some point drop the brush right onto my page with the brush facing down, of course, so that it makes like a stripe or a splotch and I'll slow it down, but it's still quick right here. There it goes. So it made a little thin stripe going down the door and across the snow. So I took my brush and dipped it in a little bit of water and just tried to kind of blend it in and smooth it away and luckily it was a very light line and it did go away but I've had cases where I get like a pretty dark smear across the page too I don't know why it's just like as I'm going back and forth you know with my paintbrush dipping it in the water painting dipping it in the water going to the palette you know back and forth back and forth I seem to always at some point drop my paintbrush right onto whatever I'm painting <laughs> Maybe I'm just clumsy. Good old Butterfingers. And the door I wanted to be, you know, a neutral color too. I would have loved to have painted it red. And I guess I could have because there's really not much of that candy cane back there. So I could have painted it red, but I kept it neutral. And I just had to readjust the washi tape that I was using to hold down the paper because some of the, the watery paint had gotten under it and lifted it up. So I was just readjusting and trying to re 
tape that back onto the wooden board that I have out. And then the sky, I thought, needed a little something. I thought maybe this is like a twilight sky or, you know, could be early morning, could be, you know, dawn or dusk, either one. So I wanted to add some of my um, permanent rose paint in there. But then I thought it got too pinky and too purpley. And then I was like, well, let me add some more blue. <laughs> So this is me just going back and forth trying to figure out what the heck color I'm going to make this sky. I could have just painted it, you know, nighttime too. I could have just gone with a very dark black. But in the end, the blue wins. So it's mostly blue, but you can still sort of see some peaks of the other color, the rose color here and there. But I decided if I deepened the color a bit, you know, I wanted to try to help make those trees kind of stand out against the sky. And now that the paint has dried, I am going in with some colored pencil and again, trying to work on the texture, trying to get those pine needles in there just picking a couple of different greens and you know again you could definitely go in and use uh, the crayons those would be very effective giving those trees some rosy cheeks and the little beastie needs rosy cheeks too it's nice and nice and cozy the trees have their all their needles so they're okay they're nice and warm all winter and the little beasties nice and warm inside the caravan So just shading and I like to ink the whole painting usually before I watercolor and do colored pencil and whatever else I'm doing. But I do notice that it does make the ink fade away. And so oftentimes I will go in and go over it a second time with my ink. I enjoy seeing all the line work. Uh, some people may not like that aesthetic and that's fine. You certainly don't have to outline anything or you could outline it, but you could use a colored pencil instead of ink. You know, when you're all done, you could just take like a brown and outline everything and that gives it a really nice look too. I do like that. I, For some reason, I just always have reached for the pen. I always have outlined and, um, or not always, but most often. I'll challenge myself. I'll, I'll have a painting where I just use colored pencil and watercolor. No ink. That'd be kind of cool. That's not something I do too often, so I think I will give that a go. And now, of course, going in with my white gel pen, which I love to use. This one seems like it's running out of ink, though, a little bit, but... Luckily, I didn't need it for too much. I just like to add some of the window lines and some of the little shiny spots that would be on the caravan and try to make some of those needles stand out. But I love the gel pen. This is one of my favorite things to add at the end. I feel like it really completes the page. And it's still snowing gently, so I just want to add a few snowflakes drifting down in the sky. And then I just thought the beastie was kind of fading into the background there. So just made it a little bit darker around him. And then the glorious reveal. It's always so fun to remove the paint from your painting. This one's not as dramatic because there's so much like white or light at the bottom there with the snow. But it's still really fun to peel it off and see crisp edges. And here's where I think I'm done. So I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to show you. But like I said, we are now going to get into day two, a.k.a. this morning. <laughs> and here we are. Now I'm like, OK, this window is driving me nuts. I got to paint over this. So I thought I would take my India ink and see how that looked. So I had my yellow. 
I am painting that window, but as you can see, it really looks green. I was hoping the ink could really cover up the watercolor, and it does cover it up, but I didn't really care for the green. And then the second thing was, I was like, this is snow. It should be glittery. So of course I grabbed my sparkly Mod Podge and now I'm just adding some sparkles here and there because I thought that would look really pretty and just like snow when it's on the ground and it's all sparkly. Then there was the mystery of why do these trees not have any snow? Because if it just snowed, then they should also have a little bit of snow at least on some of the pine needles, if not all, because it does seem to fall off pretty fast after it snows the you can just hear it falling off of the trees, but I wanted there to still be some on there. So Posca pen to the rescue, and I'm now just making the needles a little bit darker um, and a little bit bigger because I wanted them to look snowy. So yeah, I added some little snow drifts on there. And then when it dried, I'm outlining it with my ink pen to try to get it to stand out. It really is funny what happens when you walk away from something you're working on and then you come back either, you know, an hour or two later or the next day and the things you notice. So in this case, I was like, you know, why do these trees not have snow? They should have snow. And here I am just adding that Mod Podge to the trees as well so they can sparkle. And then with the door, finally I was like, okay, Posca pen, that goes over pretty much anything. And I just wanted to make it yellow. I knew it wouldn't be the same yellow as the yellow in the window, but I was okay with that. I just really wanted it to be lighter. So I did two coats of that. I did one coat, and then once that dried, I did a second coat to lighten that up. And I'm really happy with that now. and a little bit of gold because I thought maybe these things will look like jingle bells if I make them shine a little bit. <laughs> and then just some details, but then I thought this little beastie, I kind of didn't like the way he looked either. I wanted him to just look a bit more painted in. He was looking a little rough. And then of course just outlining because his eyeballs, his little eyes and nose and mouth kind of got lost in the paint. Okay, so now it is done, at least for today. I make no promises. I could come back later or tomorrow and be like, hey, you know what? I should change this. <laughs> but the most important thing is to just have fun, feel free, free to change things, free to edit as you go, you know, free to come back and just change anything at all. Um, never feel like you're limited or you have to do things a certain way. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon.